Good morning everyone. It is Sunday morning and we're going to come together now to worship together this morning. Um, as you can see I'm outside the church building and just about to head inside into the night's warmth. So why not come on inside and join us as we worship together this morning to praise God. Good morning everyone and welcome to our service here in Strain Presbyterian Church on Sunday the 7th of March. It's lovely to have you all joining with us this morning. Uh, it's especially nice this morning to be joined by the folks from Carador and Ballyfrenis and Bally Black Churches uh, as, as Andras enjoys a, a week off and a Sunday off. So welcome as we once again join together as God's people to worship him uh, this day. If you're tuning in for the first time this morning, you are again very welcome as you come and join with us. And we trust that as we all worship together this morning, that we would know God's peace and blessing. I have a couple of announcements just to mention this morning um, before our service. So the first announcement is just a reminder of a post that went up on Facebook. It's about the Christian Aid Zoom quiz. So again, this year, because of lockdown, Christian Aid can't have their normal table quiz. So it's going to happen by Zoom instead. And it's on Friday the 12th of March at 7.30pm. Now, you are asked to register by tomorrow, Monday the 8th, um, for the Zoom so you can get the link. Uh, if, you, if you'd if like to register for, register for it, contact either myself or contact Barbara in the office. We'll pass your details on to Helen, um, who will then get those details, the Zoom contacts sent out for you. And then there is a Just Giving page where you can donate some money to Christian Aid for that quiz. So remember, this Friday coming, the 12th of March, for that. Uh, the only other announcement to make at this stage is the date of our next drop-off down here in church is on Thursday the 25th of March. So on the 25th we will again be open from 10 in the morning to 12 midday and then again from 7 to 8 at night. So we will be collecting for food bank again and I will post on our Facebook page and on the website the latest information of what food bank are looking for and then I'll announce it the next couple of Sundays. Uh, we're also um, collecting for a couple of um, the mission societies, which we um, support every year here in Strain. You're going to hear a little bit more about that during the service. So just to say, please continue to listen and to hear those details. Um, and also, if you want to drop down any church envelopes in those days, again, you can do so as well. Um, so that's Thursday the 25th of March for our next drop-off. But please keep on watching and you'll hear a bit more about the mission aspect, about what we're asking you to do this month uh, and in a few months, over the next few months, just as we look to support our, our missions. Um, so please keep watching for that. Those are all the announcements that I have this morning. Um, I do have some birthday blessings to mention. So apologies again if I, if I miss you, if I don't have you here. If there are any birthdays that I do miss, please let me know so that I can uh, go back and mention them. So the birthdays that I do have, first of all, are we have Cathy Wilson um, this incoming week. So happy birthday to Cathy. Happy birthday as well to Imogen Rose. Uh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday to Stephen Wilson. Not Stephen as in Cathy's husband, but Stephen who sits upstairs in the balcony. Uh, Holly Ferguson, it's your birthday as well. And Anna Harris, you have a birthday this incoming week as well. So happy birthday to all those folks. Let's pause and let's pray for them. Father, thank you again for this morning, just as we come to worship you. Lord, thank you that we are a church family and as such we can celebrate and we can remember with one another. So Lord, for, for Kathy and for Imogen, for Stephen and for Holly and for Anna, we just ask, uh, well, first of all, we thank you for birthdays again this year. We just ask for your continued blessing upon them and upon their families um, in this incoming year. So, Lord, thank you and continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Folks, as we gather to worship this morning, let me read to you the opening two verses from Psalm 90. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before the earth, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God. Our God is eternal and everlasting. Our God is our home. Our God is always here for us. 
And it's our God who we gather now to worship and to praise, to talk to through prayer, to learn from from his word. And we pray that as we all meet together, that we would do that. So let's worship God together now as Lewis and Alexander lead us in this praise piece entitled Your Name. Just before we start our first praise item this morning, I just want to break in with this little bit of good news for everyone. I'm sure you'll all be delighted in joining with me in this news. The news is that on Wednesday, Andrew and Jenny Fraser welcomed the birth of their baby son, Joel Daniel Fraser, born at seven pounds and five ounces. Mother and baby are doing well. So congratulations to Andrew and Jenny, and we really do pray for God's blessing for your family at this time. Many congratulations. Let's come together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can stop and just gather together wherever we are, whether we are at home or whether we are out somewhere, just to have this time together to worship and to praise you. Lord, we, we do this recognising you as the creator God, as the one who is all-powerful and all-knowing, the one who is always with us. Lord, you are sovereign, you are mighty. And we just humbly bow at your feet now as we come to worship and to praise you. Lord, it's, it's right and proper for us to acknowledge you as our God. It's also right and proper for us to take this time out just to spend with you. Lord, may this time that we spend together this morning be a refreshing time for each and every one of us. May it be a time to, to set aside the busyness of life and to focus upon you so we, we may see you more clearly, understand better your, your will for our lives and that we, we could draw it closer to you this morning. Lord, as we do this, we are so conscious of those who cannot join with us or unite in this way uh, because they just don't have the technology or they can't use it. Lord, it's just through age that has made it difficult for them. So Lord, wherever our congregation are this morning, we just ask that you would draw alongside them. For the families of Strain and of Caridor and Ballyfrenis and of Bally Black, Lord, just be close to all of us this morning. 
And Lord, in the bigger sense of family, as a church family around the world this morning, as we worship you in our own time zones, in our own ways, and in, in, in our different settings, may we know your presence. May we know your blessing. May we know that sense of your hand upon us. May we know your encouragement and also your challenge this day as we seek to follow you and to serve you more and more each day. So Lord, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. It's great that you're all watching this morning and thank you for joining in. Um, it's no secret, boys and girls, as you know, that I like sweets. And sometimes when we're in church, I bring sweets with me. Well, I've got some sweets with me today as well. I have with me today some big cola bottles. I wonder if you like cola bottles. Do you? Can you use your imagination for me for a minute? Can you imagine that we are in church and that you're all sitting along the front of church, along where the radiator is, and I'm sitting on the bottom step facing you? Uh, and just imagine that I am there and I have this big bag of sweets there. And I take the bag of sweets and I start to share them out with you. But I only go halfway along and then I stop. Now, if you're one of the children who've got a sweet, you're probably going to be very happy. Um, if you're somebody who didn't get a sweet, you're probably thinking right now, huh, oh, that's not very fair, is it? And no, it's not. And you know, sometimes, boys and girls, we read in the Bible stories which seem to show that things are not very fair. So there's a story in the Gospel of Luke about two brothers. We quite often call it the, the, the parable of the prodigal son. And the younger son, he wants his inheritance from his dad and he asks for all the money and he goes off and blows it. And then he comes home again and he, he thinks he's going to be a servant. But when his dad sees him, he throws his arms around him. He welcomes him back. They throw a big party for him. Um, they've got a, a fatted calf, which they, they have a big barbecue with. Uh, and they celebrate but his older brother is not very happy and he thinks it's really unfair and he crumbles and complains and his dad says why are you complaining you look at, you've got everything here and yes you've been here you've been working away but you know that's everything here is going to be yours one day and, and that big brother thinks it's unfair you know there's lots of things in life at times boys and girls which we don't think is very fair but you know what is fair to all of us is God's love. God's love is not like a bag of sweets, which after you give it out for a while, runs out. God's love goes on and on and on. And God's love never runs out. We're not very good at times, sure we're not. We do things that we shouldn't do. We call it sin. We call it being bad. And, you know, the Bible tells us that sin is wrong. And that because of sin, um, that we shouldn't be in heaven. But because that God has so much love for us, he sent Jesus to be our saviour. And because of that love, we can have our sins forgiven and we can go to heaven. Even though so many things are unfair, God's love covers all of that. God's love doesn't have any favourites. God's love doesn't pick and choose. God's love is there for all of us. All we have to do is accept his love. It's a bit like if I had that bag of sweets that I was passing it out to you. You could choose whether to take a sweet or not take a sweet. Uh, and maybe you wouldn't choose the sweet because you don't like cola bottles. Maybe if it was something else you might like it. Maybe if it was my favourite sweet jelly babies, maybe you would all take the jelly babies. But again, maybe somebody wouldn't. And that's your choice. Same for us boys and girls, we can choose to accept God's love or we can choose to ignore it. But God wants us to choose his love because God wants us to know forgiveness. He wants us to have that great relationship with him. And he wants us all one day to be in heaven together. But it's all because of God's love, which doesn't show favouritism, which doesn't pick one person more than another. But God's love is there for all of us. Boys and girls, I trust that the day that you would know God's love. We're going to pray now 
um, and then I'm going to talk about something else to the adults. But at the end of this video today, there's going to be a post as well on Facebook, a, a song for you all about God's love. I hope you enjoy that video. But for now, boys and girls, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the great love which you have for us. A love with no limit, love which doesn't run out. Thank you that's the love which brought Jesus to be our saviour, to die on the cross for us, to take away our sins, to fix our relationship with you. God, help us not to feel that there's one person who's more favoured than us. Help us to realise that we are all the same in your eyes. Help us to accept your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening so well. Adults, there's a video about to play now um, about one of the organisations which we support uh, through Mission. Uh, look at this video and then I'm going to talk to you about Mission. The millions of people who either physically or financially do not have access to health care are staggering. We are volunteers, and I think that's part of what makes it beautiful, is people come here with just a heart to serve and a heart to make a difference. To open my eyes to these people who truly have no options and are helpless to do anything for their condition. People who have been told no their whole lives can finally be told yes. It's life changing. In Strain, we have a long history of supporting missions. For us, it is vital in the work of the church. Um, mission is something which Christ calls us to do, to go out and spread the good news of the gospel, making disciples in all nations. And there are so many different ways in which that can be done. Strain has a, a diverse history um, when it comes to mission. Part of it is... Uh, social mission or social outreach or social witness and, and the video you just watched from Mercy Ships is one of those mission organizations which we support. You have seen some of the transformations on that video that have happened as a result of the money which has been donated and the people who go out and give their time freely on the Mercy Ships giving operations to those who can't afford it. And this transforms and changes lives in a way which we cannot really start to understand. Let me say thank you, first of all, for all your support to Mission over the years here in Strain. And thank you for your support to Mercy Ships. Another way which we support is in spreading the news of the gospel as well, in teaching. Hopefully you'll be able to see that um, on the screen behind me. It's a screenshot taken from the website of United Christian Broadcasters, or UCB as we would know them, the people who produce Word for Today. Uh, we know Word for Today, it's in our church, and it's always here for you to freely pick up. But again, we support the work of UCB so that they can produce the Word for Today, that they can produce radio shows and different other means of, of getting the good news about Jesus out into the world and telling others. Again, this mission relies upon donations from churches like ourselves to be able to do that. Over the last wee while in Strain, um, our mission giving has gone down again slightly. Um, so this month, our drop-off day on the 25th of March, along with the food bank, um, our idea is to actively support our missions. So in particular, this month, we are highlighting the work of Mercy Ships and UCB. And what we're asking you to do um, on those days when you drop down, um, if you can drop down on the 25th of March, if you can bring your mission envelope with you with a contribution in it, that would be great. That contribution might only be a couple of pounds. It doesn't matter. Everything counts. And any money that you give into us for mission goes entirely to mission. 
We support missions through our United Appeal, which happens every year, and, and, we, and we give generously to that each year, and we meet uh, the target that's given to us by PCI. But we also have these other missions which are dear to our hearts, who we continue to support every year. Some of them are local in our town, like the Link. Some of them are very much involved within our congregation, like UCB. Others are bringing the news of God in different ways to those outside, like Mercy Ships. So I would like to encourage you to prayerfully consider how you can give to mission, how you can help to support the work of the missions. And in particular for this month, the missions of Mercy Ships and UCB. Like I say, you can, you can drop them down at any time. You can give online if you need those details. Um, please contact um, Barbara in the office um, or contact myself and we can get you those details. You can drop down um, the envelopes on our giving day on Thursday the 25th of March. But if you can support our missions, please, we would ask that you would do so at this time. Thank you for listening uh, as we have done that. Just as we continue in our service this morning, um, Tom Hamilton's going to come and read to us now from God's words. And then this week, Phil Cosby is going to pray for us. Uh, apologies that Phil's prayer didn't appear on our uh, broadcast last week. Don't know what happened there. But Phil is going to pray for us this week. And then we will come together and consider God's word. Let us continue to worship God. Three, two. Our readings this morning are taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, and the Gospel according to St. John chapter 11, verses 20 to 29, and 32 to 36. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious place, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are, are oppressing them. So now, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Hey. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, 
I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she say, had said this, she went back and called her sister, Mary, aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at her, his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you led him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Let's pray. Loving God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, protection and peace in these days. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that you set before us in this pandemic to share the good news of your saving grace. In the challenges of life, help us to recognise the opportunity to grow closer to you. We thank you for your assurance in your word that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you. Lord, strengthen and sustain us through these difficult times. We think, Lord, of each member of our congregation, those in our community and those globally who are struggling. Lord, we bring before you those who are ill. We pray for your healing touch. We pray for your protection for those in hospital or social care. We pray for those facing financial difficulties, those feeling lonely, cut off or afraid. Lord, help us to recognise need and to be ready to help both practically and prayerfully as a witness for you. As we physically distance, we thank you for technology that helps connect us. Lord, help us to keep contact with one another. We pray for your protection and those shielding. We pray for key workers who put themselves at risk to benefit society. We thank you, Lord, for the vaccination programme, and we pray for the continued rollout of vaccinations. Lord, we pray for those in positions of leadership. We pray for wisdom in the decisions made and trust that you will guide. We are grateful that you are in control, and we pray that your will will be done. We pray for our missionaries, both at home and abroad. We pray for the many we support and those they serve. Help us to continue to support both practically and prayerfully. And we think especially of those who are under threat of persecution. We pray for your protection and safekeeping. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. We pray all these things in your name and for your glory. Amen. We are currently working through our series here in church entitled Worship in the Wilderness, looking at just the difference it means to be in the wilderness. It's one thing worshiping God and, and uh, coming into his presence whenever we're on that mountaintop, whenever things are going so well. But whenever we are in a desert place or wilderness place, things are so very different. 
And we've been starting to learn that worship in the wilderness is all about uh, being alone and what that means for us. It's about at times being silent. And maybe as well for us at times, it's about fasting and giving things up and, and how that can focus us. You know, whenever you think about wilderness, I wonder what picture you have in your mind, or if you think about a desert, what picture you have in your mind. Maybe we don't realize that the desert is a dangerous place. If you don't like snakes, apologies, uh, but it just highlights the danger which can be found in the wilderness or in the desert. See, quite often we have that glamorous image, don't we? Can you imagine being that person taking that caravan of camels through and you, and you have that little bit of greenery in the background? That looks very nice. Or maybe for you, for desert or wilderness, you might think of an image like that from Egypt with the Sphinx and the pyramids in the background. It all seems very glamorous. But the wilderness is far from being glamorous. There is one author who puts it like this. His name is Tom Wright. And it's probably in Bible times, he writes this. The wilderness became a haunt of wild animals. The desert offered criminals a place to hide and plot. And open spaces between towns and cities were lawless, dangerous places from which travelers would be eager to escape by scurrying into the next built-up area. I don't think we can truly appreciate what a wilderness is. We can't really appreciate that unknown, that danger. And maybe for us, when we think of it in, in life terms, wilderness as well could mean failure. You know, maybe for us, the best way to think about wilderness is to think about the times whenever we struggle, the times which are difficult for us. I wonder, are you good at admitting that you are struggling? I wonder, are you good at admitting that things are not great? Think about it this way. Uh, if, you're, if you're ever down at the doctor's surgery and you go into the waiting room and there's somebody else you know who's there and you go in and say, oh, hello, how are you? Usually you get back to the answer, I'm great, thanks, and how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. And you sort of think to yourself, well, if we're both fine, what are we doing sitting here? Sound familiar? We've got that sort of image or we've got that sort of mentality of we don't let on what's going on with us. We, we keep it hidden. We keep it out of sight. We, we don't let other people see. We're actually reflecting on those difficult times. It's good for us. Reflecting on those difficult times helps us to learn. It helps us to admit to the fact that by ourselves we cannot cope and that we do need help that this life is just too difficult about us. And in fact, God wants to hear about that from us. Yes, God already knows what's going on in our lives. God already knows the days whenever we are up and the days whenever we're down, the days whenever we're close to him, the days whenever we're far away from him. But God still wants us to tell him about it. You know, it's a bit like Whenever you, if you were ever a child and you did something that was wrong and you, you didn't know whether to tell your parents about it and maybe in the end you did and, and you went and told your parents about it uh, and your parents said to you, thank you for telling me about that. I already knew about that, but I was just waiting for you to tell me. God's like that. God already knows everything about us, but he really does want us just to cry out to him, be honest with him, tell him about the struggles that we have and lay them at his feet. Because being honest with God just helps to take that weight off our shoulders, that weight off our hearts and minds. And it just lets him in that bit more so that we learn to rely upon him more and more each day. So let's do that right now. Wherever you are, let's just pause. And I want you to think for a moment about the things that you struggle with. Maybe there's something today which in particular you are struggling with. But whatever the struggle is, name it before God. 
hand it over to God and let him take control of that situation. So let's be quiet for a moment and then I'll lead us in prayer before we continue. Father, thank you that you know everything about us. You know about our highs and our lows. Lord, right now we hand, hand over to you the things that we struggle with, the things that weigh us down. We give them into your hands, asking that you take control, that you help us, that you draw alongside us and give us the strength that we need. Father, thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, God's people were in the wilderness. They were in a place that was dangerous, a place to them that was unknown, a place where they did face failure, and in fact, a place where they faced death. And even though there were thousands of them there, they still felt alone. And each one of them did struggle. But in that wilderness, they learnt to lament. And in the wilderness, we can learn to lament. Lament is a big theme that runs through the Bible. Um, in the passage that we read today, as God spoke to Moses, he said to them, I have heard them crying out. God had heard his people lament. When you turn to the Psalms, a lot of the Psalms are about lament. They're about crying out in that pain, telling God exactly what's going on. And learning to lament is really good for us because learning to lament actually helps us to repent as well. Going back to the children of Israel, in, in the wilderness, they really did struggle in their walk with God. There were times when they walked closely. There were times whenever they walked far away from God. But through it all, God was with them. If you read the account of their journey, and if you go into the book of Numbers, in Numbers 16, first of all, there is a struggle going on. And some of the people are rebelling against God. And it's Moses and Aaron who lament or who cry out at that time to God and ask that God not punish all the people for the sins of the few. And God does punish the few who have turned against him, but he is with the others and he forgives them. Another time, the, the, the children of Israel, they, they all cry out against God. And in Numbers 21, we see that. And God sends in serpents. Again, an image that we relate with, with the desert and with wilderness and with danger. And a lot of people get bitten by the serpents. And God tells Moses to make that bronze serpent, hold it up high. And if, people, if the people lift their eyes to God, they will be saved. If they don't, they will die. And the people learn to lament and repent and those who lift their eyes and repent know God's forgiveness we're no different today at times we rebel against God and whenever we do we need to expect God at times to punish us or to bring us into line or to stop us in our tracks and make us refocus upon him whatever way you want to look at it there is a cost to be paid for sin. Now, we know that that cost is paid in terms of salvation, but there's still the account that we have to give to God at some stage in the future about our actions. And there's still the times whenever God will stop us and say, no, you're not going to do that any longer. Because he wants us to lament and repent. I wonder at the minute, are you going through a wilderness period? Are you struggling because of the way your actions or your behavior is? Is there something that you're doing you know that you shouldn't be? And you need to lament and repent. God will always hear us. He will never turn a deaf ear to us. He will always answer us if we will simply lament and repent. Maybe today is a day whenever we need to do that. But as I've said, 
God is always with us. And in fact, Jesus is with us. He knows our experiences. He knows our ups and our downs. He knows our good days and our bad days. He can appreciate that because Jesus has been where we are now. Jesus has lived as a man, as a person. He has experienced the highs and lows of life. He's experienced the the traumatic days. The passage which Tom read to us from John chapter 11 is a passage which I'm sure a lot of us know very well. Jesus' good friend Lazarus has been ill. Mary and Martha sent for Jesus. Jesus didn't get there in time and Lazarus has died. And Mary and Martha are now heartbroken. And Jesus comes along to comfort them. But as Jesus looks at them, it says, when Jesus saw her weeping, when Jesus saw her weeping, that was Mary in verse 33. Jesus saw her. He knew her pain. He identified with her pain. He felt her pain. In fact, he felt it so much that we have that famous verse in the Bible, the shortest verse, which says, Jesus wept. He knew what her pain was like, and he came alongside her. This morning, if you are struggling, Jesus knows exactly how you're feeling. If you're being tempted, Jesus knows that feeling. If you are grieving, Jesus knows that feeling. If you're hurting, if you're sore, Jesus knows that feeling. He knows how you are. And right now, he is with you, with his arms around you, wanting to bring you his peace and his comfort. Will you let him? Will you let yourself fall into Jesus' arms? Will you let him put his arms around you and hold you close? Will you let him give you his peace and comfort today? You know, that's what Christ wants to do for us each and every day. And in this wilderness journey, whenever we have those days, whenever we, we have those struggles, we need to remember that Jesus wept. He knows what it's like to be a human being and to feel the emotions that we feel. And he wants to give us his peace, his strength, and his comfort this day. Will you let him do that? Will you let him in? Will you let him put your arms around you? Will you be honest with God this day? Will you lament to him? Will you repent? The wilderness is a journey. We enter the wilderness, but at the other side, we exit it again. And God wants us to exit the wilderness. And he wants us to be back in that fellowship again. He wants us to be with him and with his people, where we have that support and that strength. It's all about that journey. Life is a journey. We don't have to journey alone. We can have God right by our side. Where are you this morning? Not just for those who don't know Christ as Savior, but for those of us who do. Do you feel alone? You are not. God is with you. Do you feel that the world is on your shoulders? Well, then cry out to God and hand it over to him. Let Jesus weep with you, but let Jesus also rejoice with you. Put his arms around you and say, everything will be all right because I am in control. Let us come together and let us pray right now. Father, thank you again for this morning and for the message that your word brings us. Yes, Lord, at times the message is hard for us to hear because you will make us stop in our tracks whenever we are wrong and you will bring us to account. But thank you, Lord, that we can always have forgiveness, that we can always have your arms around us, that you will understand us in everything that we experience. Lord, just help us to cry out to you, to reach out to you, and to fall into your arms. Lord, whatever this week might bring, thank you that we are never alone, 
that no matter how much of a wilderness it might seem around us, you are with us. Father, continue with us now, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Morris and Stephanie are going to lead us in our closing hymn. Let us pray together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our service. Please remember that during the week, Monday to Friday at 9.30, we have our readings for Lent that continue. And on Wednesday nights this week coming in, we will have our Bible study again on at 7.30. That's Wednesday evening. But in the meantime, please take care and God bless.